SJC Libraries, searching for articles about biology directly from the databases. From the library homepage, scroll down and locate the Databases tab, which is right next to the Discovery tab. Click on Databases, and we're going to go ahead and follow the Callahan list of databases. Now this presents us with a list of all the databases that the library subscribes to. Okay, there's 206 of them. We can narrow things down a bit if we select the biology subject under the all subjects pull down. Okay, and we can see right off the bat there's 13. Now there are four best bets located at the top in the yellow box. And then there are additional databases listed below that. Now you can select these individually right from here and do your search, or we can also look at the uh, course guide that we have on the right hand side. There's a Bio 150-151 Callahan Library course guide. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, so this is like a mini website pertaining to the Bio 150-151 course. Okay, so it includes all the library resources that you may need to help you uh, in support of your studies here. So you would navigate these guides by using the tabs going across. You have the home, books, articles and databases, websites, associations, citing sources, and there are library tutorials as well. Okay, but this is about, this tutorial is covering searching databases. So let's go ahead and follow the link that says articles, databases. All right, so down the center of the page, we can see the first box is the discovery. Okay, that's the equivalent of the library catalog, and that was covered in another, a separate tutorial. So we're going to just skip that. And then below that, we have article databases. Now, these are the databases that were included in that initial list that we just saw. Um, these databases in here, and then plus to the right, there are reference databases. Those were included as well. Okay, and on this page, there's also additional information about a discussion about what is a database, how to find full text, how to find journals, and your accounts at the top right. Okay, so let's try a search using the articles databases. Uh, let's select Academic Search Elite. Okay, that's an EBSCO platform database. And this is the initial search page that you brought to. Now, there are a lot of options in the bottom here. Um, you have full text, the peer reviewed buttons and all that. You can, you know, check those items off now or you can do it later. I tend to do it later. I like to get a lot of search results and then whittle down from there. So let's try our first search. We're going to search for cellular. respiration and as I start typing you might notice that some suggested text comes up so I see cellular respiration here I'm going to go ahead and select that and I'm going to click search okay so now I have 13,601 results so I think I need to narrow things down a little bit okay so if we look at the left hand side under refine results we can limit Apply the limiters now. I'm going to select full text and peer reviewed. And I'm going to change the year, uh, the start year to 2010, uh, 2012, sorry. Okay, so now I have 1,404 results. And I'm thinking maybe I should add another keyword to uh, get the topic, you know, get my results more on topic. So let's go ahead and try to type in, we're going to type in photosynthesis. And as I start typing, you can see it comes up. So that's great for people like me who can't spell. So I'm going to click search. Okay, so now I'm down to 31 results. So that's much better, right? All right, and these are all full text peer-reviewed articles, and they're 
uh, since 2012. So let's go ahead and examine the first record. All right, let's click on the title. Okay, so it, do plants breathe? Debunking misconceptions related to plant energy transformations. You have your authors. This is the pu publication that it's in, the science teacher. It's an article. The subject terms are listed here. There's the abstract, so you should always read the abstract to see if it's pertaining to your topic or not, or if it's of possible interest. Okay, and as you scroll down lower on the page, you can see this is the HTML version of the article. All right, but if you also look at the top left, you also have a PDF full text version. You can click on that to get the PDF file. On the right hand side, there are additional tools uh, leading to Google Drive. You can add to a folder. Uh, you can print, email it, save. Um, your citing tool is here. Uh, permalink. If you wanted to save the link to this article, you want to always use the permalink. Okay, um, never use the link that's up top in the address bar as that's a temporary link. Anytime you want to link to an article, either uh, attach it to an email for yourself or if you want to just provide a link, select the permalink. Sometimes it's called a persistent link, sometimes it's called um, a full text URL. Okay, so that's an example of a EBSCO search. So let's close that up. And let's try another database. Let's take a look at, let's see, the science database from ProQuest. Okay, now ProQuest is a different platform from the EBSCO host. It has most of the same features, just it might be located, you know, the features might be located or arranged a little differently on the page. All right, so we're just going to type in the same search again. Okay, and as we start typing, we could see we have some suggested text. So let's go ahead and select cellular respiration. Okay, and let's go ahead and type in the photosynthesis right away. Okay, so we can see our results are 3,931. Let's try limiting some more. It's um, by default, it's sorted by relevance, but if you wanted the most recent first, you could, or the oldest first, you could select those as well. But usually we stick with the uh, relevant option. So let's click full text and peer reviewed. Okay, and that limits us just to scholarly journals, which makes sense because we selected peer reviewed and the full text did not take. Let me do that again, sorry. Okay, and let's change the date range. You can use the slider to do that if you like. We're gonna go ahead and select 2010 to present and click update. And that gives us 2,000 results, still quite a few. Let's select subject, see what's under there. Okay, so 680 of these titles are tagged with photosynthesis. Okay, 390 uh, are tagged with algae. So we could limit using this. Or we could look at document type, okay, a feature article versus just an article and there's general information, a literature review. Okay, so we can skim our results to see if there's anything that's relatively close to our topic of interest. If we skim the results, the first link is the title of the article. Then beneath that, you have the authors 
and you have the journal title bolded. So that's helpful. You can skim those results and see if the journal title uh, seems relevant to you. Okay, so this one is, uh, the first one is peer journal. Okay, the second one is in the journal titled eLife. This third one here is Chinese Journal of Oceanology and so on. Okay, there's a photosynthesis research journal. Okay, so this can all help you determine if these articles are relevant for your topic. All right, let's take a look at number five, college students' understanding of the carbon cycle. Okay, and that's in the journal titled Bioscience. Okay, and again, you can click on Abstract, Details, Full Text, Full Text PDF. You can see how many other authors cited this article, so how popular it was. Uh, 23 other paper cited it and if you followed through you would get to actually let's do that if we click on that link we'll see what other articles cited this article so if it was an article that was really pertaining to your topic these are additional articles that this author these authors used as references so that's a way to get additional articles for your topic okay let's go ahead and click on the title Okay, so here's our abstract. The full text is uh, down below that. This is an HTML version of it. Okay, if you wanted the PDF version of it, just on the left-hand side, you have the option full text PDF. And these are the references again that cited this article. Okay, and on the right-hand side, you might notice there are related items. So there are other articles that the this database uh, automatically connects that thinks may apply to your topic of interest. Okay, so that's an example of a ProQuest database. Okay, we can also use a reference database to get some background information on our topic. Okay, so let's take a look at the Encyclopedia Britannica. Okay, and let's type in cellular respiration, and it does come up as a suggestion as I type cellular respiration, it says biochemistry, so let me click on that. So here's a encyclopedia article about the topic, right? So it gives you graphics, it's like an encyclopedia entry about that. Okay, and then if there's anything related, there are hyperlinks in here that jump you to that topic within Encyclopedia Britannica. Okay, and you have some tools up here. You can share this article. You can save it as a favorite. You can print it. You can cite it. Okay. And that's just an example of a Encyclopedia reference database if you wanted to use that for background information. Okay, thank you very much for your attention.